Hi, I'm Mike Hogue, and I want to talk about systems thinking for farmers, gardeners, permaculturists, and social and personal transformation. This is one of these common permaculture topics, and when it comes up, people's eyes glaze over because it's super complicated to understand it. But it's actually not that difficult. We're going to run through it and make it clear. So uh, also, when we're talking about complicated systems, it's important to realize that our soil is a complex system with a lot of different things going on in it. Uh, you know, our bodies are complex systems. Uh, our farms are complex systems. Our local markets, our neighborhood associations, and our societies are all complex systems. And the thing about them is, they don't act the way we think they're going to act. You know, take example of the farm. Let's say, you know, we want to get rid of the weeds. So what do we do? We bring out the rototiller and we till everything. Then the problem is instead we've created a bunch of pest problems and maybe soil collapse and fertility decline and we've nuked the soil biology. And guess what? The weeds are just going to come back anyway because uh, it, this kind of intervention is just not very reliable, right? So what we're trying to do is figure out how to save our energy, make big lasting changes with small amounts of energy. And that's what the system that Meadows came up with is all about. Let's take a look at it right now. Let's look at her original example. Okay, now we're looking at my little graphic of Meadows' original places to intervene in the system. These are leverage points for changing complex systems. On the bottom left, we have things that are low leverage points. Uh, as we see here, they require a lot of energy to, to make these move, right? Is they're down by that, le you know, by the bar of the leverage there, by the fulcrum point. They're easier to move, but they don't make a lot of change, and it's not lasting change. It takes a lot of energy. On the top right, we have things that are really high leverage. Small amounts of energy can cause really big changes, but it's hard to figure out how to do that. It takes a lot of design and observation to make that work and thought. So we have to be thoughtful as we move up in how to do this. So we're going to give examples of these in a minute, but I just want to run through uh, Meadows' original point, starting at the bottom, the weakest things, and moving up to the top. She puts number 12 on the list, constants, numbers, and parameters. This means measurement, knowing basically how much is going on. So if we're talking about our soil, we're talking about like how many measuring how many microbes there are, what kinds of microbes, right? Yeah, or maybe what the soil nutrients are. And then as we move up from their buffer size and stocks and flows, we're talking about directly changing those. Maybe getting a microbial brew down on the soil or synthetic fertilizers to fix the nutrients. So the thing about these is they are easy to see and do, but they don't tend to have lasting changes, especially if we leave the things towards the top like our systems and behaviors that are causing the problems in place. The problem is only going to come back if we don't change the systems and behaviors. So as we move up, we're getting to changing behaviors. This means, uh, you know, uh, basically what is causing those problems. For example, are we having nutrient problems because we're tilling and not doing rotations and not having fertility built into the system, right? Um, are we having pest problems because of uh, pest loops that, that we're actually encouraging the pests, right? As we move up from there, we're talking about system change. This could be system rules like, uh, uh, like making something no-till or system structure, actually changing those systems, change to no-till, change to organic, or changing the system goal can be the most powerful thing. So switch to the idea that we're farming for money and switching to the idea that we're farming to regenerate soil. We're farming regeneratively. Now we're getting to really powerful changes. As we move up from there, we're getting to the really powerful stuff. These are changes to the whole mindsets that create the system in the first place and even transcending that whole paradigm altogether. We're gonna talk about these in just a second. Okay, so have I cleared it all up? Probably not. Uh, so far, it looks like we have 12 leverage points. Let's make that a little bit easier and simplify it to four main places or kinds of places that we can 
intervene in complex systems. One is brute force methods, looking at the numbers and changing those numbers directly. Now, usually that requires a lot of physical energy to do. If we're talking about social systems, that's going to be interpreted as violence. If we're talking about ourselves, we're going to feel that energy and that brute force as violence. Uh, for example, let's say you want to lose weight. What do you do? Maybe you start counting parameters, right? You count the calories and, or count your macros, right? Then what do you do? You try to limit the calories in and the calories out. You know, then you're setting yourself up for violence because there's a conflict between that piece of cake over there and you wanting to actually lose weight. You're going to interpret that limiting thing as a form of violence. So as we move up from that, we're going to find much more effective ways to meet our goals that we don't experience as violence anymore. They're not requiring that physical energy to change. So here's my farmer's guide to systems thinking. So now on the bottom left, we have some examples specifically for the farm. Uh, and, and then underneath the lever, we have some actual examples. Remember on the left side, we have high leverage points that require a lot of energy to get little change. And on the right, we have things that require a lot of thought and protracted observation, little energy and have a huge impact. So starting out, we've got again, testing the numbers and making direct changes. So examples, like we said before, are soil tests and adding synthetic fertilizers, monitors, uh, monitoring pests and then spraying for the pests, monitoring weeds and spraying for the weeds. Again, or, you know, grabbing that microscope and figuring out what's, what's the soil biology is, and then trying to import that soil biology. Again, these are low impact things. If we're not changing the environment and the habitat and the systems that are creating the problems, which is why in all the studies, we're finding that things like, you know, designer microbial sprays and inoculations just aren't as effective as creating good habitat. Because as we create good habitat, we're moving up into the second area here. Remember these low level interventions are necessarily violent tilling the, the weeds, spraying the pests, unlike when we move up to this higher level, which is to change the behaviors that are actually causing the problems. So if we're having soil fertility loss, maybe we want to stop tilling. Maybe we want to include uh, nitrogen fixers. Maybe we want to uh, change the kinds of crops we're growing, do better rotations. If we're talking about pests, we're talking about changing pest life cycles, right? Intervening in those pest life cycles. Maybe we're doing things that are creating ideal pest habitat. We want to stop that. Or we want to change uh, positive feedback loops, like getting more beneficials to be involved in the garden, making more habitat for those predators that are going to make natural pest control. So now we're really moving up into some, some strong, powerful self-organizing systems where we're having to do less of the work and those pests and predator cycles are doing that work for us. And now we're getting up to the really powerful stuff, actually intervening in the systems that are driving the problems themselves and creating the problems. So now we're talking about things like changing those systems, change to an organic system that'll work for you, change and learn no-till systems, learn polyculture systems, learn systems for growing in deep mulch. Better yet, change the whole goal of your farming from just making money to something like regenerating the soil or maybe even regenerating the whole ecosystem. Now you're changing the whole system that created the problems in the first place. And finally, we can change the whole mindsets that cause the problems in the first place. For example, instead of trying to lose weight, change your whole mindset to a fitness lifestyle and health lifestyle. When it comes to the farm, stop farming for money, farm for happiness. Better yet, don't be a farmer at all you are a beneficial species in your ecosystem. How better yet, you're a young relative learning to live in harmony with our elder relatives, the plants and animals. Now we don't even have to try to change. The whole system will transform on its own.